Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to discuss a deck that I brought for the Tri-Regulation format for Bushiro Springfest Indonesia, and that is Maigo. I was the standard player in the team with Kelvin Galini uh, as the V Premium player and Wirab as Premium. I decided to bring Maigo, which is a pretty sub-optimal pick for most people, uh, but we'll talk about that in this video and kind of why I decided to bring Maigo in comparison to decks like Loire and Shurinui. Uh, because we haven't really talked too much about Maigo on this channel, um, it might be worth kind of going through the deck and essentially explain what the deck does. Uh, this deck is actually really strong at the moment, a very budget friendly deck. Um, so it's definitely something that you guys can pick up and give it a try. So going through the deck, it's pretty simple, uh, very standardized, pretty much across all builds. So starting off with the uh, ride line, uh, nothing too crazy. You can only essentially run this ride line. Uh, so the grade one searches for your grade one order, uh, the grade two when it's rowed upon by the grade three, you top seven for a Maigo uh, and add it to hand. Uh, the grade two searches for any of the Maigo girls as well as any of the Maigo songs. So the grade two or the grade three order. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much what the ride line does. Then uh, obviously, talking about Maigo, you essentially have to talk about the core of the deck. So, uh, I'll put it in the, I guess, sections on where, you know, like the girls are usually going to be. So, uh, this format is a little bit weird uh, for some people, but I'll explain why. So, uh, we obviously run four of each of the girls. Um, so, uh, Rana. Uh, her skill is pretty much when she attacks, uh, you may choose to give her a 5k. If you do, um, she binds herself at the end of turn. Uh, she gains the 5k until the end of turn, which means that if she restands, she can gain another 5, making her 15 and 20. Um, Anon, the best card in the deck, uh, essentially on place, Canvas 1, top 5 for a Maigo, and call it out to Rearguard. So uh, any one of these four, as well as the Persona Ride, uh, so Tomari, um, can be called out using her uh, really niche application with the Krychich girls in this deck as well uh, And then pretty much after the battle that she attacks you can bind her and draw one um, Usually on the second swing if you're resetting your whole board um, But in the early game pretty much after she attacks bind her and bind one uh, Then we have Taki uh, pretty much on place regards soft loss one top three for a Maigo song and add it to hand shuffle your deck I uh, rarely ever use this skill. I don't think I ever use this skill once. Um, maybe there was one time where I was like damage denied. Uh, I tried to dig for an order and that was like probably the only time I ever use it. But the soul is just too valuable in this deck to be able to use it for an effect like hers, which is like super subpar, it's especially if like, you know, you go through all your songs, your songs come out uh, super early um, and you only really run four Maigo songs in the deck anyways. Uh, her second skill is really good. Uh, pretty much when your Tomari, your grade 3, gets attacked, uh, you can bind her and give Tomari plus 10k. So she's essentially a 10k on the board, um, which is really good. You can just call her out using uh, Tomari skills, so the grade 3. Uh, she, so she's a cyclable 10k shield, which is really strong. Uh, and then the last unit is uh, Sayo? Soyo? Um, so her skill is on place, regard, give one of your units 5k, any unit, so you can give your Vanguard 5k as well. The second skill is actually really niche. Um, so when she boosts a Maigo, uh, you can sub-loss one and for the battle, uh, your opponent has to guard two or more cards if they wish to guard from hand. Uh, this actually catches a lot of people off uh, in certain matchups, uh, especially if their hand is low. Uh, you can actually block PGs with this card, uh, which is really, really strong. Uh, but yeah, we'll get to more of that uh, in just a moment. So those are the four girls, obviously playing four for maximum consistency. And then obviously the last girl is uh, Persona Ride, uh, Tomari. Uh, so her skill is uh, Axe once per turn. You can sub us one, uh, call a Maigo girl from uh, your bind zone to rear guard. If your opponent's grade three or greater, you call two instead. Uh, the second ability, act one. Uh, if you haven't, I guess, uh, played a song order this turn, you can come as one, search your deck or drop for a song, a My Go song, um, and play it. And then if you search your deck, shovel your deck. Uh, sequencing with this deck is very similar to uh, decks in other games, such as Pokemon, where 
uh, you want to maximize what you kind of want to draw or um, I guess search um, you know before other things so uh, sequencing with this deck is like uh, well we'll make this deck shine um, if I have to say so uh, and pretty much sometimes you kind of want to see something else so like in the early game if I'm going second and I don't have a, a great one order I would want to choose to use my starter skill first to draw one but if I have one in my hand then I obviously want to use the right line first to deck thin one to draw into something else so uh, sequencing to min max the cards that you want to try to get into your hand um, is very uh, prevalent in this deck and really maxes this deck out uh, really well so Persona Rise, Persona Ride, Persona Ride is always good and Persona Ride actually makes this deck really, really strong. Um, then, obviously PGs, so we play uh, three Grade 1 PGs, Elementaria, Elementaria is needed for the Luard matchup, um, into Drag Strider. This deck actually farms a lot of hand, um, surprisingly, so it actually has very valuable cards in your hand um, and creates a board really easily, so, you know, you can actually manual guard Luard pretty easy with this deck, um, but yeah, Sanctitude is pretty much always needed. So that's that. Then I mentioned it before, but I play uh, two different Krychic girls. So one uh, uh, Mutsumi and two Sakiko. So TLDR, uh, these cards are only used for the Grade 1 order, which is um, Haruhi Kage. Uh, so pretty much this order calls one of these two girls from the deck onto rearguard and both of their abilities is when another unit is placed that isn't Krychic, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, when, when your other unit uh, other than Krychic is placed um, this turn, which means that it can be placed on Vanguard or rearguard, uh, put this into Soul and Draw 1. So why is this really important? Because in the early game you essentially use this to call one of these two based on the grade of your vanguard and then you play Anon so the grade 2 girl the MVP of the deck so you pretty much play Anon uh, so let's just say like you know you play this order right and then you call like the grade 1 and then you play Anon she sees one unit being played right which is Anon and then Anon will use her skill to, let's just say, find another of the girls and you play this, her, right? That means that two units play on the board, which means that it props two um, instances of Sakiko. And because Sakiko doesn't have a cost, it just says, put her into soul and draw one. You activate the effect twice, uh, do as much as you can. You essentially put one into soul and draw two because it sees two instances. Funnily enough, you can actually do this uh, a draw three play where if you're on like Tomare for example and you play Haru Hikage call this and then you use the Vanguard skill to essentially call two right so she sees two then you use Anon skill and then Anon calls like Rana so she sees three so one two three and then you put her into soul and you draw three right uh, so pretty much pot of greed or pot of greed and a half based on which turn you use um, But yeah, it's just really strong being able to stabilize your hand in the early game um, Being able to replenish cards. It's just really really strong. So yeah, uh, there's a second reason why I play um, uh, A 1-2 split uh, with the grey one order the reason why is there are times where your opponent damage denies you and you obviously want to you know, use this, the song to get stuff out, right? So yeah, on turn two, if your opponent denies you, do, doesn't want to give you the Anon uh, call one to Pot of Greed and draw two, what you can do is like play this order uh, after you've called units on the board and then call this as the last card and put it into your front row and attack for 10, right? Which means that you actually use zero cards in your hand, you deck thin one, and if your opponent doesn't get rid of this, you essentially refund the card that you call uh, off Haruhi Kage on turn two, the moment you run on grade three, right? Uh, so essentially this creates an attacker uh, without using or expending any of your Mygo cards in hand, uh, which is really valuable because sometimes, you know, you want to keep cards or uh, if you're going, you know, first, you can only call one on the Tomari turn. Uh, so you don't really want to spend your Mygo cards in like that early in the game. 
Um, so this just makes for a really good attacker uh, and hence why we play one only one of the grade two and then two of the grade ones. So uh, that's pretty much the Krychich girl and I guess that explains the grade one order but uh, just to reiterate anyways when this is placed uh, behind your vanguard, uh, which is the only place that you can play this song, search your deck for one of the Krychich girls equal or less to your vanguard's grade and call it to rearguard. Another application that is really good is that if you play uh, Haruhikage on your turn one, so let's just say if you have like your grade one ride line, you're going second, you play this, you actually can play over the song, which means that you confirm one damage. And what I mean by confirm one damage is that you're swinging for 16, your opponent can't just 15k guard this, which means that the likelihood of them just no guarding this attack is pretty much nearly always, right? Uh, so this attacks uh, 16k to your opponent's 8k vanguard. They're gonna know that if you hit check a crit, then you're automatically just up on damage, or your opponent's up on damage, and you're just up in tempo in the game just by playing this behind your vanguard, right? Um, which is really strong. Uh, and I guess other applications like you know if you call this on like grade two, uh, and then you play this play this order and you place this here, this attacks for 18. Um, but you can also play it here so that you play other cards in other zones based on the position of the girls. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much, I guess, uh, the play that you have with the Krychic uh, grade one. Then I guess moving on to the last two orders. So we play uh, two of the grade two, um, Heki Ten Banso and two Mayuta. So the grade two uh, order skill is uh, when your Vanguard attacks with Tomari in its name, choose one of your rear guards and stand it. And if your opponent's greater or greater, stand, uh, will choose one column and essentially stand all the rear guards in that column. Uh, Mayuta, uh, the skill has at the end of battle that your vanguard with Tomari attacks. If you have all four girls on the board, you restand your whole board uh, by discarding one card from your hand. And then uh, if your opponent is grade three or greater, then all of the units gain plus five. Um, this is usually a turn four song. Uh, unless you want to push aggro on turn three, usually turn three I'd be um, you know using this song instead. Uh, generally, these are the cards you want to heal out as well because they uh, work really well in the drop zone as well because your vanguard can sing songs from the drop zone. Uh, additionally, you sometimes want to keep like one of these in your deck based on the deck that you're playing against. If your opponent tries to damage deny you, like Drag Strider does, uh, you kind of want to manually draw into this card. Uh, so that you can essentially play the game, right? Uh, so that's that. Now, uh, that's pretty much the main deck uh, in terms of normal units. So we play uh, a bunch of triggers. Uh, so triggers in the deck doesn't really matter too much. So I play four heal, uh, eight crits. Uh, this intersoul crit doesn't actually come up at all. So you can actually substitute it for like vanilla crits. Uh, then you play uh, three fronts and one blue over trigger so uh it asks for her. so it asks for her is actually really good in this deck because then you can search for your uh, pgs your um elementaria if you hit into damage and heal it out uh you can search for persona rides uh you can search for your missing migo pieces which is really strong so i think uh you know it asks for her is uh, a really strong over trigger uh to play in this deck now i found that um playing fronts is better in this deck than playing draws. This deck actually naturally draws into its combo pieces really easily because of Anon. Um, pretty much if you draw Anon, uh, your deck is functioning really well. You just spam Anon twice and you pretty much get your whole board set up. Um, if you sequence correctly, then the likelihood of you drawing into your Mygo pieces is uh, better than someone who doesn't min-max, um, you know, sequencing. So, you know, deck fitting your orders first, playing your orders first before uh, searching your deck means that it's one less card that you don't get to see in the top five search for a non, um, stuff like that. So this can actually be swapped with a vanilla crit and it actually mattered in one game. Um, good thing is, is that I kept the 5k in hand, but then I realized like if I had another 5k, um, it would have mattered if this was uh, needed as an extra booster because 5k uh, pumping behind like um, I don't know like a 15k Rana or like a 10k um, Anon is pretty valuable but like if you, let's just say you know you have like 
uh, a Tomari that you can just place on rearguard um, and then play this as a 5k boost in the back row, it becomes 18. Uh, 28 on Persona Ride actually makes numbers. So uh, I never ever use the Inter Soul Crit. Um, I just find like the Crytchit girls just get me the soul that I need for the game and then just manually play the game with caution as to when I'm using my soul uh, and when to not. Sometimes a lot of people use the soul for um, Soyo in bad situations, but uh, we'll get to that, uh, I guess, now, really. So let's talk about, I guess, the applications of where to put uh, certain rear guards uh, during the game. So obviously you have your uh, Tomari Vanguard in the middle, and then you obviously have Anon and Rana in the back, uh, in the left and right. Uh, Anon has to be on the right, Rana on the left. Uh, you obviously have one of the two songs, so you know Mayuta or um, the Great Two Order. So you have that behind here. Then you have these two. So the question is, where do I want to put these rear guns, right? So in the mid game, you actually want to put uh, Soyo behind the Rana. And the reason why is in the mid game, people tend to, um, I guess, use PGs because this is a threat, right? The application where this matters is towards the end of the game because let's just say if there was a turn when you didn't get Persona Ride, swinging for 18 and forcing out two cards from your opponent's hand is really valuable, right? Especially against Luard, where they don't have the intercept grade one that becomes a 10k. Uh, this automatically forces out two cards from their hand, two 5ks, um, which means that you actually deplete their hand quick, right? Sometimes it's really unoptimal for them and they drop like a 15 and a five, uh, which is overguarding this attack. Um, and then this still hits for 23, which is a 15k shield anyways. So if you put it like this, right, it's still hitting for 18 unless you put the Soyo power here. The Soyo power I found um, usually is put onto the Vanguard because it becomes 28, right? Your opponent hits defensive trigger, you're hitting for 28, your opponent still has to go with two cards. Whereas if this was swinging for 23 against a 23, your opponent can drop a 15 for uh, two to pass which is a one card guard. So if you put the 5k onto the Vanguard to make it 28, your opponent has to force 20k guard for uh, two to pass, which means that a lot of decks that don't play fronts, um, they have to drop like 15 and five, which is a two card guard, right? So this deck is all about playing um, your rear guards so that it forces two card guards um, from early to mid to late game, uh, pretty much across all stages of the game. Um, Soyo allows you to do that because sometimes, you know, if you place it like this in the uh, later parts of the mid game, uh, putting 5k into here, and then let's just say it's uh, Persona Ride, right? This is 28. 28 against decks that play draws, uh, effect draws, will mean that it's 15 and 5, and then this will be uh, 33, which is uh, 15 and 10, and then this will be 28, which means that it is uh, minimum what? Uh, 15 and 10 for one pass or 15 15 for two pass right so two cards two cards two cards right um which is you know this this is what makes this deck really good because you can make a really unoptimal number which is like 18 force your opponent to uh guard with two cards this is really good as well against decks that play fronts so if this is 28 right you use the skill to soul blast one um and force your opponent to guard 20k but they have to opt to run 15 and five instead of just dropping the one front that they checked the previous turn, right? Uh, which makes it so that you go through their hand. And the best thing about this is that in the later game, right? Let's just say your opponent has three cards. You attack with this after your Vanguard attacks, right? Mayuta restands your whole board. You attack with this. Your opponent PGs this, uh, two card guards this and thinks that they can uh, drop a grade one PG. You have one soul for, um, so you, you attack with this and Soul Blast 1, your opponent no longer can play the P, the one singular PG in their hand and they're at 5 damage, you just automatically win, right? An unguardable attack, right? Because it means that your opponent has to guard two cards for this, but they only have the one card in uh, their hand, so they're not able to guard, right? So there's like um, weird stuff like that. So if it's like three cards even, like in a different world, right? So you attack with this, your opponent has three cards, they PG this, 
uh, let's just say this is only like 18 haha <laughs> like you know it's gonna be like 10k shield uh, you pop a trigger on this or like uh, if you don't pop a trigger right there's 18 you saw boss one you force two cards your opponent can't guard right even though they have sufficient amount of shield in their hand they just can't guard so um, that's like you know the little tricks that you can do with this deck um, which really makes this deck um, super strong um, and I found like you know this is the deck that I decided to bring purely because there's just so many applications it's super consistent um, and it just does what it does right so I guess let's talk more about uh, why I decided to bring this deck over decks like Shunui and you know other decks in the format right so prior to the event I discussed with um, my teammates Kelvin Galini and Wirat and the question I asked was how many players in Indonesia play Shunui and how many players play Luar and the automatic answer was Shunui because it's accessible uh, much more accessible than um, Luar because uh, some decks some people obviously play the Biscotti build Tefalt's really hard to find um, Shunu is just super straightforward and if you checked my um, deck discussion the other day that deck is literally out of the box uh, just throw in like three Esper ideas right so Shunu is like super uh, super popular right and to I guess uh, emphasize the point I think I played more Shunui's in day two than I did um, pretty much any other deck right so this deck actually goes really good into Shunui, especially if Shunui, you know, normally they opt to go second. Um, my go obviously likes to go first. Uh, this deck going first into Shunui is pretty much like super advantageous because what you do is you essentially clear your board, right? So you uh, you have your Anon, uh, you have your Rana and say Soyo, right? You clear your board because obviously, you know, you have your uh, center vanguard like this. Uh, everything removes itself. So after you sing the song, you attack, right? You use the skill. So plus one, it binds itself. Um, this binds itself after it attacks. Uh, this attacks. This attacks. Let's just say you play the Great Two Order. This attacks again, and at the end of turn, both of these uh, remove themselves. And because they haven't rode Oboro yet, uh, they can't call anything. They don't have anything to dominate, right? Which means that this deck is um, really strong into Shunui if it goes first, and the likelihood of them choosing first is really good. The second thing is, is that Persona Rod really capitalizes um, for this deck, so going first is always good with this deck. So naturally, going into Shunui is a really good matchup, right? Uh, you free your board, it's pretty much equivalent to playing a uh, Bracing Angel Ladder because it cancels out your opponent's uh, turn completely, um, and then the next turn it's like, whatever, right? Um, Furthermore, I found that this deck is really good into non strat deck sets. So, you know, Razael um, and stuff like that. It struggles a little bit into Varga because Varga is like um, super aggressive. So uh, it struggles a little bit into Varga, but um, not so much. I remember that I played Varga twice, one in Swiss, one in Top Cut and lost to both. The second time I changed the way I played and I lost by 5k shield, um, but alas, you know, um that's just how it is <laughs> um but yeah mostly i brought this deck because i anticipated that i will be seeing more shunui than i did luar right so i guess let's go through the tournament run and what i i guess first so first first off i played against claudine uh super easy four attack deck uh this deck five attacks has good hand can find pgs well draw into pgs uh which is good Second, um, I played against Luard. Uh, this Luard player saw five crits out of deck uh, with like 20 plus cards in deck. Uh, on a drag strider, I was at three damage and I said no guard because obviously I won't be able to play the game um, if I don't get the damage right. Then they go front blank crit OT and that was it, right? Can't, can't guard that. Uh, third, I lost to the Shunui. Um, and that one, I felt it was probably because he had a pretty picture-perfect game, I think. Uh, Shenry going second, Izaswo into Shenry into uh, Furai into another Shenry or something like that. So pretty much like 10, 23, 23. 
Um, so I played super aggressive in the early game and then pretty much tore this tech apart or at least the tempo was in his favor and then pretty much that snowballed, right? Um, then I played Luard turn uh, round four, uh, one that. It was actually really, really close. Survived the second drag strider, went into my Mayuita uh, persona ride turn uh, and then checked OT because that was like the remaining couple cards in my deck um, and he didn't have two PGs. Then I went to Varga, he hit blue OT on a restand and that was it. So, you know, three attacks with uh, blue OT is pretty nice. And then the last two rounds I played both against Shurunui and did the exact same play that I explained before and won them both, right? Super easy, super straightforward. And then I versed the Varga again in uh, top eight, uh, lost by 5k shield. Um, I felt that I think I could have guarded a little bit differently in the earlier turns, which may or may not have uh, saved me in that particular situation, but alas, um, you know, it happens. Then in top four, I played Shunui, same thing, went first, uh, cleared up my board, and yeah, he just didn't have anything. Like, uh, he checked like three blanks, uh, five, five, and uh, Esperadia. We had a good laugh, and yeah, that was pretty much it. And then finals versus Luar, this. Luard game was nuts. Um, I didn't see Persona ride the whole game. My first damage was my OT, which stopped my Haruhikage um, Anon combo, which means I couldn't pot of greed. Um, didn't see Persona ride at all, all the way up to the very last turn of the game, uh, which is really annoying. Um, opponent healed a couple times, which uh, obviously without Persona ride, it's really detrimental to this deck and. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Had to manually got a drag strider, I think like 66k or something, which was pretty scary. Um, but yeah, that was uh, pretty much how the tournament went. So had a lot of fun with this deck. Um, I think, you know, this deck going forward is still a really strong deck going into set two, potentially set three as well. We still see this deck top in the JP side. So uh, definitely, you know, a deck to consider, you know, putting a bit of money into and just, you know, getting the deck um and playing around with it so that's pretty much that hope you guys like this video uh i know i made the first deck discussion this will be the second one um on my tournament run uh kind of explaining the choices on what i decide to bring for these tournaments um i think it really helps um coming from a uh, competitive background um obviously for newer players who are trying to get into the competitive scene uh essentially what goes into my head when i decide for decks um for particular tournaments um, if it was solos, um, single events, I may not choose to run my go. Um, but then again, you know, it depends on the field of players and what access they have to certain decks. And like I said, you know, uh, Indonesia, they really like to play Shunui. So this really goes well into uh, Shunui. So I think out of the four Shunui, I lost one because of tempo, but I think um, slightly unavoidable. Um, but I think... There were, I think, like one or two turns that I could have played a little bit differently, which may may or may not have affected the game. Um, but essentially, this deck won three Shunui's uh, round six, round seven, and uh, top four. So, yeah, really good. So, yeah, if you guys like this video, pop a like, comment down below what you guys think um, of these type of videos. Do you guys like them? It would be really good for me to, you know, get some feedback on these sort of discussion videos. And I think it's really... Uh, good to kind of um, discuss the things that kind of goes into my head for the competitive side of things and uh, what thought processes I put into you know regional tournaments so that it helps you guys kind of learn uh, what goes through my head as well. If you guys haven't already, click that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.